everybody. Welcome to my E3 2017 coverage. I know I haven't really been great about updating my channel and there's a bunch of reasons for that and I'll do a life video that I'll update later in the week. Um, probably like a vlog style video, just something casual to let you know like what's been going on. But you can always guarantee that I will make E3 videos. I love E3. It's like nerd Christmas. It literally always comes like right after WWDC. So it's literally like two weeks of like one week of technology and cool shit I like from Apple. And then it rolls right into cool shit I like that has to do with video games. So I really dig this time of year. Um, it's fun. I don't have a lot of friends who want to like get into it and go over like all the things that were said and all the games that are coming out. So making these videos is always a way for me to like get that excited energy I have out there. So you'll always find E3 videos even if that may be the only thing I put up. E3 seems to start earlier and earlier every year and this year it starts with EA on Saturday. Bethesda started that thing where they jumped the gun like two years ago and started on Sunday and I knew as soon as they did it, it was going to like have a chain effect of someone's going to be like, ooh, we got to jump Bethesda and like, and as soon as you know it, it's like into the next week already and then, then that'd be sad because it'd be like WWDC and E3 at the same time and I'd just be like sad because can't watch all those press conferences. Like, they'll be competing press conferences if they're the same week. So, anyway, let's get started with EA. EA is always hit or miss for me. As long as there's something from Bioware, I'm pretty usually fine. It's practically the only studio I care about, except for now that they have Star Wars. So, Star Wars and Bioware are really all I care about. The sports stuff, I just, I mean, I like sports. If you know me, I'm a huge Cubs fan. They don't have a baseball game. <laughs> It's like baseball's licensed to Sony for the show. And I like soccer, but I don't like FIFA. I don't like the community around FIFA. So I just, I don't play their sports games. So we'll probably gloss over the sports games for the most part. I did think it was cool that Madden had a like legit story mode. It seems like for the first time, like I haven't played Madden in a few years. So I can't be a hundred percent sure. Like I have, I, I haven't played Madden at all on this new generation and it was, I, I was off a year or two of it the past generation. So it's been like maybe five or six years now, maybe seven since I played Madden. So, I mean, I stopped watching football too. So I guess it's like, makes sense. After the story mode, which looks awesome by the way, I think it looks, I think it's really cool that they're trying to figure out how to incorporate the story mode into Madden like they had done with like NBA and FIFA. Like those seem to both be pretty cool. It's Madden. They've done something to switch it up for the people that play it. So congratulations for them. Like I feel like they'll like it. It's always cool when you see someone do something new. So, okay. We'll move on to Battlefield 1 is getting an update and um, I didn't play a whole lot of Battlefield 1. I think I played the act, I think I played like 10 hours, which was the trial limit. Because I just suck. I'm not good enough of a multiplayer person to play Battlefield 1. Like it would just like snipe. People just know where the sniper holds are and they fucking like just snipe you from across the map and you're like, I have no fucking idea where that's coming from. What? Yeah, no, I'm just never that great at it. I died all the time. It was super frustrating. I thought the maps were way too big and, um, but I did like the story, the vignette. I got through all of those in 10 hours. So that's basically what I did with the Battlefield one. But this expansion has me excited to get it because they are now going to focus heavily on the Eastern front of the war, which was the largest, like, front of the war and um it doesn't really I feel like that and like the Ottoman part of the war which they covered in the first one never seemed to really get covered like we don't in America don't really cover World War One a whole lot it's just like in history you kind of learn it you're like oh yeah there was this first world war but we never like really delve deep into like how it ended was really like the pretext for the next one so that's cool. It's super cool. The name of it is In the Name of the Czar, which is kind of cool. I kind of hope they make the Czar out to be not simp super sympathetic. Like, I hope they make him out to be the idiot that he was. 
but we'll see. The thing that's really exciting though is they are having the Petrograd Women's Death Battalion, which were 300 women who volunteered and became this like unit of the war. And so I think that's super cool. I think that it puts women into battlefield so people can feel like, yeah, I can play as a woman in a way that's also historically accurate to the war, right? Because they've been super good about being historically accurate with this. Um, there's a podcast, it also might be a YouTube channel called The Great War that my boyfriend absolutely loves and um, I listen to when I have time. Uh, and they went over a lot of like Battlefield 1 and it was pretty interesting to see like how well they had put that together. So it's cool that they heard that pe women wanted to play in multiplayer and they were like, let us get a way to figure out how to facilitate that. Um, and I think it'll be cool to play as them. They were such a hardcore unit that like, I think it was like 2,000 or 3,000 women um, volunteered to begin with, but by the time they were like done with the training, they had weeded it out to it only being about three, two to 300, maybe 400, I'm not quite sure on it. Um, it's been a while since I studied them. But yeah, um, I'm super excited. That's super cool to me. Like, it was really kind of shocking. Like, they were like, oh, we're gonna do the Eastern Front. And I was like, okay, well, I'm super on board for that. And then they were like, yeah, and the Women's Death Battalion. And I was like, really? Like, I was kind of like stunned for a second. Like, I can't believe that's actually happening. That's pretty cool. Um, so there's that. Uh, it, it was nice to see men in blazers. I, like I said, I like, I like soccer. Part of the reason I follow soccer in non-World Cup years is because of men in blazers. So it was cool to see them there. I'm sure the FIFA fans were like, yeah, it's great. So that was cool. Um, so then they did Need for Speed Payback, I think is what the name of it is. Yeah, Need for Speed Payback, which, I don't know, I've never been the biggest Need for Speed fan, like, Need for Speed is great and all, but it's not like, I don't know, the end all be all for me. Um, it's not the end all be all for me. Uh, I fell out of racing games like that a long time ago. I think, I think the last racing game I played was the first... Forza Horizon, and that was because it was on sale, like, right when I first bought my Xbox. Like, the first weekend I got my Xbox One, it was, like, 19 or, like, 19 or 30 bucks. So I was like, well, whatever, I'll try it, because I don't have that many games, and there weren't that many games that I wanted. So it was cool to have that, but I haven't really played it that much since that, like, first couple weekends. So that's been a couple years. I don't know. It looks like Fast and the Furious. I think that's what everyone thinks. Uh, it looks like Fast and the Furious and Burnout, which is fine. I never really liked Burnout and I haven't watched a Fast and Furious one since like Tokyo Drift was in the theaters. So I don't know. Just I'm not the case for it. It looks like it could be fun. If the reviews come out and are like, hell yeah, this thing's super great, I'll probably pick it up and play it because why not? Looks fun. But I'm not super sold on it. The next one to come out was the EA Originals and it's like their tiny little indie studios. I think they um, unraveled with like Yarny was one of them and then this guy and these creators are always my favorite of the whole E3. They're always so happy and so passionate and so proud of what they put together and the guy for A Way Out is no different. Um, this game looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to force my boyfriend to sit and play it with me on the couch. Um, I think it's cool that like you can do things you can have a character do you can have one of the two characters do things and they're going to handle like getting things like the grocery not the grocery like the laundry cart in different ways like one way is guys gonna like use smooth talking the other guy's just gonna like bash people's heads in like I think it's super cool I think it's fun I think like it seems ambitious and I hope that they can like pull it off, but like I've seen a couple tweets since the conference of people who've played it who seem to think it's pretty great. I am super excited. It looks fun. There's a couple screenshots from it that I'll put in right here. Uh, the character design looks cool. I think someone called them Sideburns and Sideburnier, which I think is pretty funny. Um, 
it looks like it's gonna have like a really good story to it too and it was cool to see like there's a woman of color in it and then also a woman who's just given birth in it and like it's cool to see that these like seemed like filled out fleshed out real life like places that you can go so that was pretty cool i'm excited to see how it goes okay so now we're gonna get to where the chunk of this video is going to be <sighs> bioware oh bioware like i think i i mean you can tell we're big bioware fans in this house um <sighs> I didn't finish Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm gonna get out there and say that right now. I didn't finish it. I didn't even purchase it. It was another thing where I used the EA access to try it out. And the first time I started playing through, I couldn't stand the way the character looked, so I backed out and did it again. And that took like another hour. Or so finally got the character semi passable, but basically ugly still. And then like weird bugs happened and it was crashing and then at one point it crashed and didn't save my progress so I went back through and so maybe I played like two and a half three hours into the game and the 10 hour trial with all the bugs and the crashing and the hating the character and all of that stuff and um I just didn't like it and I know people say it gets better and it's on sale this week for like 30 bucks or something which is kind of I think testament to how much people really just don't like it so it's on sale for 30 bucks this week i may pick it up for my playstation see if it runs on playstation any better than it runs on xbox but i'm not gonna hold my breath and people just didn't seem to like it and as someone who fucking loved the first three mass effects which i didn't play till super late like i just finished playing the first three mass effects this like winter i finished them up Whatever, somehow I just missed Mass Effect the first time around. I was really big into Dragon Age, but not so much into Mass Effect. But, um, it was just a real disappointment, and I think a lot of people were disappointed. So, while I am very excited to see what Anthem is going to be, I am also very wary that it could just be garbage again. Because it was garbage. Like, I'm going to play it because I love Mass Effect, and... I want to see what happens. I am going to be very wary of Anthem unless they do a better job of showing us what it's about before. And they didn't do that today, they just gave us a teaser trailer. The full thing will be at Xbox. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about it at Xbox tomorrow. But let's go through these screenshots I pulled from the trailer one by one. So we start out on the wall and um, I like it. It's got like, a, an attack on titan kind of vibe for me which is good i really like that show um i also think that the curvy structure that's coming out in the back there is like super reminds me of xenoblade in a way but um it looks like we're in an earth ish area i would say so next up we have like a communal area it is uh there's like some fire maybe like a workstation like for the like area that we're seeing it looks like I can't tell if they're all human or not. Um, this girl in the front may look like, has like a weird shaped head. It might be hair, it might be her head. Um, can't really tell from the picture, but I'm liking the visual and the design that they have for a lot of the areas. Like the world seems colorful, this seems, I mean like the outside world seems colorful, you'll see in a second in another outside shot. And um, these insides seem like real gritty and dark, which seems kind of perfect for if they're being isolated in behind a wall. So here's our first look at one of the beasties and it, um, it's like hulking and big. Um, and then there's another one of those structures that like, they're like man-made, you can tell, like the arches, um, they kind of really look like Xenoblade. I can't like get over that. And then the forest, this is what I think they do a good job of. They do a good job of making games colorful, but not like, not garish. I mean, sometimes Dragon Age can get a little garish, but this isn't. That one looks pretty great as it is. It's um, it's muted, but like still like lush, and you feel like you could live there. We have what looks like a lightning strike. Um, I feel like it's going trying to tell us that like the world's gonna be fucked up too. It's not just the big beast and whatever like horrible human like tribe we're probably gonna come up against. That it's also um, the actual like environment itself, the weather. Um. It looks cool. It's like a flashbang in the video and then it like darkens out. But um, 
Yeah, it looks really good. Like, I mean, Bioware's super good at making concept art and those kind of renderings from things look good. And then we get things like Mass Effect Andromeda. Now we're getting into the part where people say it looks a little bit like Destiny. And I can kind of understand that. Um, it's got the glowing eyes, like the axos. Is that what they're called in Destiny? I don't remember. I haven't played in so long. Um, and I like the suits. Um, we're going to see a bunch of suits right now. But they, I just like the uh, the design of the suits are cool. They look like way powered up um, Mass Effect armor, which I don't know. You know I guess you kind of would expect that. Bioware does have a style for space and it seems like it's carrying over a little bit into this. Now you're getting in to look at what looks like tank armor. Um, it looks like like a mech, but basically it looks like a giant mech you're going to crawl in. Um, that could be fun. I am glad that in the next shot, however, we do see light armor. I mean, that looks like Mass Effect, like almost down to the like pose that the human makes. Um... I like that it has the double eyes. It looks kind of cool. I just, I'm digging that, like, stance, that pose, that armor. Um, you can see the other people around. Um, I like the, I don't know, I like all of it. Then we get the name of the game, Anthem. Um, I'm excited to find out more tomorrow at Xbox. And let's get back to me sitting on my couch. All right, and now we got the Star Wars Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 looks awesome. My boyfriend and I played hours and hours and hours of Battlefront 1 multiplayer. I loved it. Yes, I'm one of those weird people who loved it. It was great. It was just what... It was what I wanted. It felt like playing and living in a Star Wars game. I didn't care that it was super shallow. I think all the things they put out for it were, I think, having to pay people charge for it was ridiculous and I didn't buy the extra packs until way after it when they put them on sale for the first time then I bought them but um yeah it was just good I had fun I loved all of it even though I sucked at it even though people were better at me like I didn't mind it it was fun it was quick back getting back into the game like I liked it when you got the power-ups and were playing as like Luke or Vader or Palpatine or Leia or Han. Like you felt powerful and it was nice. It was fun. I loved um, the capture the flag mode was super fun. Uh, I'm excited. There's going to be a story. I think that it needed it. I think we need a one, a single player offline Star Wars game more than ever. I don't like... These movies are great. We've got great movies, great books. The fucking cartoons are out of this world. And, like, there's no fucking video games stories to play. And it's so frustrating and so maddening. But they seem to have done it. The girl who played, um, the girl who's playing the commander, her dress was fucking out of this world. I'm 100% sure it's a her universe dress and hopefully they will put that shit out to buy because I will buy it in a second. It is gorgeous. Um, I love that the character looks like her. I love the attitude she brought when she first came in. She was charming. You could tell it was a super big deal to her. You could tell she loves Star Wars a whole bunch. Um, the multiplayer thing they did with I Justine and the other people was cool. I don't understand why it was a part of the press conference. It's kind of confusing, like, were they going to come back and tell us more after? And they did, but that's, I mean, like, that's it. I mean, I mean, they did. That was confusing because it felt like one of those things. It felt like the thing they did last year with Battlefield 1 where it was like, here's our press conference. It's this, this. It's over. Now Battlefield 1. And like, you got to see everybody come in, in the on the heart, on the red carpet and everybody was fucking high as shit. Like, that was great. That was funny. I remember Battlefield 1 because it was separated out that way. But I feel like this has a... This has a tendency to get lost in the thing. I don't remember a whole lot of it because I wasn't sure if it was coming, like, I wasn't sure what was going on with it. I wasn't sure if it was coming back. Um, I kind of, I kind of don't know how I feel about you being able to pick up heroes from different eras and mix them. Um, they showed Ray versus Maul, was it? Ray and Maul in the same thing on Naboo, which was like, okay, whatever, like, I gotta let it go. It's a video game. It's multiplayer. It's not canon. It's whatever. But like, I don't know. It just kind of feels weird. I did. I just feel like you probably should have just like siloed those into things. But it could be cool. Who knows? I will reserve judge final judgment until I play it. But this thing's an instant buy for me. I love the first one. I love Star Wars. 
that's it. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon for Microsoft and Bethesda, and have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Bye. One of those reasons, I'll give you a little sneak peek, is this guy. <laughs> yeah, hi.